Hello gentle viewers and welcome to another episode of Alistair Reviews It. And today I am going to be going over my top 10 books of 2020. So I had a pretty good reading year. It was a very, very good reading year. And um, it was incredibly difficult to narrow down all these amazing books into a top 10 list. So I also have honorable mentions towards the end of this video. My goal for 2020 was to read... 30 books and I read 32 books. I don't read in the extreme quantities of other reviewers uh, because I really like thick books and then when I read those books I tend to sit with them for a while before I pick up a new one. I like to digest these books. This next year I set a modest reading goal for myself of 35 books. Now disclaimers, uh, this is all opinion based. Um, I did not include any reread books in this list and I did not include any sequels. If I read a book and continued on to its sequels and I love them all, then it'll just be one book. Also, for any books that I reviewed this year, I will be linking the review down below. Number 10 is a Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Um, this is a prequel to the Hunger Games uh, dystopian trilogy by Suzanne Collins. And I must say, I, I, I like the Hunger Games. I'm not in love with the Hunger Games. I had some real problems with the trilogy itself. But I absolutely love this book. Uh, I picked it up because I knew everybody's going to want to read it and I wanted to do a quick review of it and I did not expect loving it as much as I did. The book is told from the viewpoint of President Snow as a child and Suzanne Collins definitely doesn't shy away from great characters in this. It felt much more adult and it also felt more like a thriller than it did like an action, you know, dystopian book. Uh, that the first trilogy gives you and I did I would commend her for her bravery because I, I feel like she knew people weren't gonna like this book because it was so different from the books that she's written before and people wanted just more Hunger Games and uh, she gave them an amazing thriller number nine from my list she's come undone by Wally Lamb so this is my first and only contemporary on my top 10 list. I read this book at the beginning of the year with my husband and I really, really, really loved it. It takes place in the 1950s and follows Dolores Price as she grows up and she is not a good character. She is definitely somebody who's incredibly selfish and you are immediately engrossed into her life and the things she does because she is one of the most self-destructive characters I have ever read and I identified with her so much because of it and it was such a joy to be able to experience her life through this book. So good, so good. Um, I would recommend it to anyone. Number eight is... The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is a trilling conclusion to the Ark of the Scythe trilogy. And, did I say trilling? Thrilling? Thrilling! This just concludes out the Scythe world. For those of you who don't know, the Scythe book, the, the world with, within the Scythe, whatever, dumb, is actually a utopia, not a dystopia, and uh, they're Everything is perfect, you know, uh, the humanity has overcome death, crime, everything like that. Uh, the only issue is people don't, I guess, appreciate their lives. So there is this sect, part of the government, called the Scythedom, whose job it is to go out and glean, as in kill people. Um, and this is the third book to that, and I loved it. I really, really, really loved it. It is an unexpected conclusion to this trilogy. I did not expect anything that happened in this book. So, yes. My number seven book of this year is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This is an amazing horror, but it's also kind of a comedic horror. It's definitely a serious horror, but there is a lot of comedic relief in it. 
uh, which kind of give me some Buffy-esque vibes. And it takes place in the 80s. And we follow Abby and Gretchen as Gretchen gets possessed by a demon. And she's a teenager. And nobody believes um, Abby that her best friend is possessed by a demon. And they have to kind of deal with this on their own. And it's really, really good. Look at this. The cover looks like a VHS cover. And it was uh, such an amazing read. I read this one with my husband too. Number six is And I Darken by Kirsten White. And I expected to like this book, but I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it to be in my top 10 books of uh, 2020. Um, actually, like almost halfway through, I was like, oh, this is a good book. And then it just got so good. So this is a historical retelling of Vlad the Impaler, uh, but it's gender bent. So Vlad is a woman. And what Kirsten White does in this book, which makes it so interesting, is that... Uh, instead of just following along exactly what Vlad the Impaler, Impaler did, she creates a scenario where um, she needs Vlad or Vlada, Lada in this book uh, to accomplish the same things, but at the same time uh, overcoming what it means to be a woman in this culture. And I loved it. I really, really loved it. I, I immediately started the second book, um, even though I had other books to finish. And... It's so promising. Plus, there is LGBT. Uh, there's LGBT representation in this book, which really there should be in most books. Like I don't even know why I have to say that there is LGBT there's gay people everywhere. But anyways, um, yeah, this was such a such a delightful read. Such a delightful read. And speaking of great characters, great characters. These are all great characters. Yeah. Last thing I wanted to say about this, last thing I wanted to say about Inner Darken is it is a historical fiction. It's shelved for the most part, I think, in YA fantasy, but it's not fantasy. It reads similar to fantasy, but it is not fantasy. Next, I have A Black Sun by Rebecca Runhorse, and this is my most recent read. And it was so good. So I picked this up knowing that I was going to love this. And I ended up loving it, which is very comforting for me. But it is an epic fantasy that is inspired by pre-Columbian Americas and their civilizations. It has a bunch of great characters that seems to be a theme. Um, different viewpoints. Uh, a bunch of different religions uh, that seem to be all real and very embedded uh, within the magic system. In this book, there's different kinds of magic system in this book. We didn't explore it to a full extent in this first book. This is the first book in the in the Between Earth and Sky trilogy. So hopefully we get more of that later. But there's also a ton of political intrigue. And I love the political intrigue in this book. I saw that some people just didn't weren't a, about the political intrigue. But I found it incredibly intriguing. It The political intrigue in this book was what kept me going, and I really, really, really loved it. Next, I have The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This book takes place in the late 1980s, uh, 1990s, and it, it focuses in on a couple of housewives in... South North Carolina, who start a, a true crime book club, but this strange gentleman moves into their suburbs and he might be a little fangy. The, the strange gentleman moves into the suburbs. The leading lady, Patricia Campbell, kind of suspects there's something weird with him, especially since there's a couple of kids going missing in certain parts and nobody will believe her. It is so freaking good. And uh, just like My Best Friend's Exorcism, this is true, true, true horror. But also, you know, it's has its comedic relief. Like, it's the way Grady Hendrix writes, uh, just so engrossing and just gets you so much into it. I would recommend this for anybody. It, it's excellent for uh, the Halloween spooky season. So I, that's what, what I read it for this year. I would recommend it to anybody. It's so good. <laughs> Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter, and this was such an amazing story. It's a epic fantasy inspired by African culture, 
And it's a revenge story. I've realized this year that I really, really enjoy revenge stories. I think I'm going to include a lot more revenge stories this year in my reading and maybe even do a revenge story list. Uh, but this follows Tao. He is a man who is at the bottom of his caste system. And then there's a wrongdoing that happens set against him and his family. And he decides to seek revenge over those people who are better than him by just kicking butt. This, I would describe the story as akin to watching a John Wick movie in book form, except it's an African inspired, I'm fired, except it's an African inspired epic fantasy. I loved it. I, this is one of the quickest big book reads I have ever had. <laughs> My number two read, very closely almost number one, is Gideon the Ninth. And I I have a really good, I think it's really good, review of this. Um, I'll link it down in the description box below. Uh, but this is a sci fantasy, which it, it's, it's kind of like a uh, space opera, but there's necromancers in it. And we follow, in this book, we follow Gideon the Ninth, who is a, the cavalier for her necromancer, Hero the Ninth, and the sequel came out this year. Immediately as I finished this book, it was like fate, and I read it, and both of them are so good. That's what, but I, I didn't, according to my rules, include them on the list, otherwise it'd just be these two, you know, back to back. I don't even know which I think is better, because these are both so freaking good. And let me tell you, Tamsamir does an excellent job with character development in this book and in this book with these characters and making them feel very genuine, very different from anybody else. And uh, Gideon is a very comedic person. She's so somebody who just speaks her mind. She just has a very dirty mouth. And But everything that's happening around her is like, incredibly serious, incredibly scary. And we see it through her eyes. And the way that she does that, the way she tells her stories through her character's eyes and characterizes the story itself because of that is truly amazing the way she even writes these books these are hybrid epics like this is a an epic fantasy but it also took place on an epic and small scale and was a mystery and then this one is even more epic than this one i mean than this one and we get so much more into the power systems in this world and how this world came to be and it just honestly answers a, a ton of questions but it also opens up a ton more these books are so freaking good, and I cannot wait for the third one. I cannot wait. And for most of you who follow this channel, you might realize at this point what my number one book of 2020 was. And if you guessed Rhythm of War, then you were Rhythm of Right. The first book for 2020 for me is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. I thought this was going to be my number one book, and it was. It was incredible. For me, it was a very satisfying fourth book in the Stormlight Archive, and it answered a bunch of questions for me, and also expanded so much. And we've been waiting for people who read a lot of Cosmere for there to be a lot more linkages between the books and the characters in the books, and really the huge, huge, huge epic scale of the Cosmere, and this book did not disappoint. Um, I would recommend to anybody to start, if you are a fan of epic fantasy, to start the Stormlight Archives, or if you want to get into Cosmere and eventually get into the Stormlight Archives, because they are pretty hefty books, I would recommend starting with Mistborn. It's so freaking good. Uh, anyways, let us go into my honorable mentions. For honorable mentions, first I have To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini. I very much enjoyed this book. I think it was about a four stars for me. And it's a book that I I had to sit with for a while. I can tell the incredible effort that he put into this ep epic space op opera and uh, how it is an ode to science fiction. And he also takes a traditional space opera and he makes it very much his own um, it's, it's pretty incredible, honestly, and I think that for me, this, it, for some reason, doesn't feel complete, and I know that he has other books that are going to be in the Fractalverse, um, and I, I can't wait for those, because I think once those come together, I'm going to enjoy this one even more. 
And I also have a review for this one. Next, I have The Great Hunt, the second book in the Wheel of Time series, and I enjoyed this book a lot. So I, I read the first book, and it was pretty thick for me. Um, it was good. I, I liked it a lot, but it wasn't, I didn't truly start to kind of like get onto the Wheel of Time sprint until this book. And this book took me and took me into this world and I really fell in love with the characters, especially the female characters in this book. The female character the characters in this book really shine, well, in the series, really shine in this book. And I start to gain a lot more respect for them. And uh, a lot of the characters start stop being as one-dimensional as before. And we start to see a little bit more dimension to them in this book. Um, I'm still in the third book, reading the third book. And that'll probably be on my TBR for this month. Next, I have Grave Peril by Dresden Files. I think this is the fourth book in the Dresden Files. And um, I listened to it on audiobook. I'd recommend to anybody to listen to the Dresden Files on audiobook because it, it feels like a 1950s murder mystery, but it's a fantasy, urban fantasy set in Chicago. And um, I've been told by many people that it gets more and more and more epic. But for me, uh, grave peril where, where's that happened and it was just like a normal like case by case kind of thing and then this one I think it it exploded and uh, I I'm I'm halfway through reading the next one and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm expecting these to kind of bump up on my list uh, this next year because I'm gonna be finishing a couple of them and I'm really enjoying them next I have the bands of mourning this is the number six book in the Mistborn series, but it's separate because it's the new era Mistborn because you have Mistborn era one and then you have Mistborn era two, which is set hundreds of years into the future. It's a flintlock fantasy. No, not flintlock fantasy. What is it called? It's a Western fantasy. It's like a Western, but it's a fantasy. Maybe it's flintlock too. I don't know. I have to, I ha I have to figure that out. But it's the second to last book in the 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 second era um the books are much s shorter and more more concise than the first era and at first it felt kind of dresdeny uh, but then it became a lot more epic in scale and i really fell in love with these characters um it's it, it just it's like a i would say they take place in like the 1870s 1850s um uh if, if we liken them to our time, uh, but just with all the Mistborn, uh, the, the power sets that were introduced in Mistborn. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to the conclusion to Mistborn Era 2 and what Brandon Henderson does with Mistborn Era 3, which should be futuristic from what I know. Okay. My next honorable mention is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Again, applause for this being so awesome and... Uh, Applause for this being received so well. Uh, uh, was on a bunch of fantasy uh, top picks, and it's super well written. Honestly, this is like a hug. This I've heard it described like a hug, and it is like a hug. And um, for for me, this just didn't make my top ten because it's not exactly my cup of tea. I definitely enjoyed it, and you know, I will be drinking this cup of tea later on too. But like, it's not like my favorite. Like my favorite's like chamomile for example no like my favorite is like irish breakfast tea for example and this was like chamomile you know if that makes sense i don't know but um i've i've admired tj clune's work for a long time and i want to get back into tj clune i've read mostly his gay romances and now i want to get more into his fantasy and i know he has a superhero uh book too so why not pick those up i really want more gay content in <laughs> my fantasy so <laughs> let's do it Next and last, I have Surrender Your Sons by Adam Sass. This is a YA gay thriller. The main protagonist was kidnapped from his home by, well, not even kidnapped. Do you call it kidnapped if it's like if your parents give permission? So his mother gave permission. So he's kidnapped. And he's taken to an island and where everybody else is going through this conversion therapy. And they have to figure out a way to take, take down this conversion therapy and get out of, of being trapped on this island with these really, really horrible people. And let me tell you, this was a very compelling read and with what I think to be a very satisfying ending.
That concludes my top 10 books of 2020. Please let me know what you think. What were your top 10 books 2020 or top five, uh, whatever it is. And what do you think about my list? Uh, would you have ordered them differently? Also, I am announcing, just like I said in my last video, that I will be launching a Discord, which is now launched um, for this channel. Uh, the link will be below if you guys would like to join into some Discording discussions. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out with the ups and downs. I've never done a Discord before. Um, and so if, if any of you know how to Discord it up, please let me know um, so that I can really take advantage of your knowledge of Discording. Um, that's it. Uh, please look up. Um, please look out for my uh, TBR for January. And I'll see you later. Hasta luego, gentle viewers.